The film began by discussing the issue of too many people on Earth. It started in 1969, the year of the first moon landing. At that time, the Earth's population was 3.6 billion. In 2009, the Kepler telescope was sent into space to find planets like our own. By 2153, the population had reached 6.76 billion. The movie focused on a spaceship that arrived on the planet Tanis to search for different planets that have the same resources as Earth. By 2174, all the available water and resources on Earth had been used up. This led to the launch of the Elysium spaceship. The scene then changed to a really sad situation where a spaceman was being shown tortured in a small room of the spaceship. Somehow, he managed to overcome the difficulties and challenges of the spaceship chamber. He began to search and wander around the spaceship. He had a strong desire to get out. He started hitting the iron door with a rod vigorously, but unfortunately, he failed. In the next scene, the spaceman was shaving in front of the mirror when suddenly the spaceship started tilting due to a power supply issue. Another man appeared, who turned out to be another spaceman. Both of them recognized each other and were extremely surprised to find themselves in an unknown place. They decided to search for a way out of the spaceship. One of the spacemen sat at the control panel while the other decided to explore more about the spaceship. On his way, he got stuck in a tunnel and saw lifeless bodies around him. He tried his best to escape and finally fell into the lower compartment as the door of the tunnel opened. He wandered around and suddenly heard some strange noises indicating the presence of a third person on the spaceship. He investigated and followed the noise, leading him to a girl. He pursued her, but the girl grabbed him and threatened to kill him. She then fled and disappeared into the darkness of space. The spaceman saw various deceased bodies and became terrified. The astronaut heard something extremely strange as the lights dimmed and flickered. Fear filled every corner of the spaceship. The noises grew louder and more terrifying. He hurried to hide in the darkness, trying to conceal himself. Suddenly, a very frightening thing passed by him. It was a terrifying creature that seemed to be searching for something. The astronaut's face was covered in sweat due to intense fear. His whole body was trembling and he was sweating profusely. He held his breath tightly, trying to stay as quiet as possible to evade the frightening creature. The astronauts were seen talking to each other, expressing their hopelessness about the possibility of returning to Earth. They were feeling extremely hopeless and lost. The scene then transitioned to one of the astronauts sharing his recollections of being on the spaceship. He recounted how images from the planet Tanis were transmitted to the people of Earth, instilling a sense of hope. Tanis was depicted as an alternate planet teeming with resources, water, and abundant life, offering a promising prospect for the inhabitants of Earth. The visuals showcased signs of lush vegetation and flourishing plant life, all contributing to the portrayal of Tanis as the next potential habitat for humankind. Official announcements declared the intent to send the first wave of settlers to Tanis, amplifying the anticipation surrounding this promising venture. Amidst his reflections, the astronaut fondly remembered his wife, reminiscing about their cherished moments together. Another astronaut encouraged him to continue exploring the spaceship, fostering a glimmer of hope that they might uncover traces of their own loved ones within its confines. Meanwhile, the astronaut stationed at the control panel was observed providing guidance to his fellow crew member, directing him on how to navigate through various protective gates in their quest to locate the main entrance. As the man approached the gates, he stumbled upon something unsettling and unsettling. He complained of feeling as if he were hallucinating, surrounded by numerous lifeless bodies. As he continued to venture forth, he stumbled upon a man hanging from the ceiling. He directed his torchlight towards the figure, and suddenly, the man's eyes opened, instilling fear and dread among the viewers. He began to scream, but the astronaut managed to calm him down, urging him to keep quiet. The distressed man frantically expressed his urgency to depart as swiftly as possible, citing the presence of perilous creatures in the vicinity. The astronaut attempted to coax information about these creatures and their origins from the frantic man, but he was in too much of a hurry. As soon as they stepped outside, they came face to face with those creatures. Every fiber of the astronaut's being was engulfed in fear. He sought refuge behind the astronaut, and the creatures began their assault. They fled to safeguard their lives, but unfortunately, the frantic man fell victim to the mysterious beings. The creatures then set their sights on the astronaut, but another man suddenly appeared, rescuing him from the clutches of danger. Expressing his gratitude for saving his life, the astronaut engaged in conversation with his savior. 
After their discussion, the astronaut advised the man to remain where he was, assuring him of safety, while he himself embarked on a mission to locate the reactor and rectify the power supply system. In the subsequent scene, two more individuals emerged, a girl and a boy, engaging in a heated altercation. The astronaut intervened, urging them to maintain their composure and desist from fighting. He emphasized the importance of unity and solidarity amidst their struggle for survival within the eerie confines of the spaceship. Acknowledging the intensity of their situation, he advocated for a collaborative approach to enhance their chances of survival in the menacing darkness of the spacecraft. Together, they proceeded to a secure machine gate, where the girl placed her hand on a scanner to trigger its opening mechanism. Suddenly, the enigmatic creatures made their appearance, prompting the astronaut and the man to take a stand and fend them off. While the others engaged in combat, the girl successfully activated the gate, enabling all of them to pass through unscathed. The door swiftly closed behind them, effectively barring the entry of the menacing creatures, allowing them to breathe a sigh of relief within the safety of their newfound refuge. As all three individuals stepped into a brightly illuminated laboratory, the girl showcased her knowledge of the facility, enlightening her companions about the diverse array of embryos that a spaceship carried, intended for eventual propagation on the planet Tannis. Meanwhile, the scene shifted, revealing the commander, stationed at the control panel, who had lost communication with the rest of the team. He was observed struggling to escape the encroaching darkness. Suddenly, a harrowing and alarming sight unfolded as another man appeared, visibly distressed and pleading for the commander's assistance. The commander stood transfixed, filled with a combination of shock and terror at the ghastly state of the stranger, trembling with fear. The focus then returned to the trio, the girl, the boy, and the astronaut, as they continued their exploration. Abruptly, the astronaut experienced a brief yet vivid recollection of his wife. He confided in the girl, expressing his intuition that his wife might be present in the vicinity. He recounted how all crew members were permitted to bring their spouses along on the spaceship, thus fostering a sense of hope amidst the prevailing tension. However, their hopes were swiftly dashed as they heard an ominous and suspicious sound. Unfortunately, a dreadful calamity lay in wait for them, as an army of enigmatic creatures materialized, launching a ferocious assault. A fierce battle ensued, marking a pivotal moment fraught with danger and uncertainty. The scene transitioned to the commander persistently urging the individual to divulge information about the mysterious creatures, yet the person adamantly refused to comply, sparking a mild argument between the two. The focus then returned to the trio, continuing their quest to locate the reactor, when they encountered another individual residing within the spacecraft. This longtime resident offered to cook for them, fostering a sense of relief and comfort within the group. Meanwhile, the girl attended to her wounds, while the astronaut examined the presence of green algae-like structures on the walls, noting its unusually adhesive properties. Engaged in a discussion about the elusive creatures, they speculated about the possibility of the creatures infiltrating the spaceship from the external environment or whether they were originally present on board. Curious about the peculiar green substance, the astronaut inquired further. The girl speculated that it might be an enzyme aiding in human adaptation to the novel biosphere of Tannis. She went on to propose the theory that these creatures could potentially represent a mutated form of humans. Prompted by this revelation, the astronaut probed deeper, questioning the reasons behind their mutation, to which the girl found herself unable to provide a concrete explanation. The scene concluded, leaving viewers enveloped in a cloak of suspense, curiosity, and scientific discourse surrounding the enigmatic mutations. In the subsequent scene, the focus shifted to a conversation between the commander and the boy, as the boy inquired about the concept of Pandorum. The commander proceeded to elaborate, describing it as an orbital syndrome with insidious initial manifestations, gradually evolving into recognizable symptoms such as schizophrenia and hallucinations, highlighting the severity and complexity of the condition. The narrative then returned to the trio, where the man preparing food elucidated the mission and purpose behind the Elysium spaceship. Amidst the exchange, he recounted a story, potentially fabricated to captivate their attention and divert their focus. Unbeknownst to them, he cunningly ensnared them with a rope, leading to a tense standoff. Sensing the urgency of the situation, the astronaut implored the man to release them, emphasizing the critical need to reboot the reactor. With the ship's voltage plummeting and impending doom on the horizon, they stressed the imminent peril and necessity of their mission. Understanding the gravity of the situation, the man relented, freeing them from their restraints, and allowing them to proceed with their vital task of rebooting the reactor, thereby averting the looming catastrophe and preserving their fragile existence within the confines of the spacecraft. 
The scene shifted to the commander, who finally managed to reconnect with the astronaut, their communication link restored. Eager to ascertain their location, the commander inquired, prompting the astronaut to reveal that they were currently situated within Sector 12 of the ship. He proceeded to caution the commander that the reactor was on the verge of complete shutdown, imploring him to provide guidance on the path to the reactor's location. As they pressed forward, they encountered unsettling sights, including mutated and enigmatic children shrieking and scurrying away. Their journey led them to the captain's bridge, where a devastating scene awaited them, the lifeless bodies of the crew members' families. Overwhelmed with sorrow, the astronaut reminisced about his wife with a heavy heart and tearful eyes, his emotions intensified by the haunting. While the commander was occupied, the boy suggested that they should leap out of the spaceship before the reactor shut down. The commander dismissed the idea, deeming it a suicidal proposition, and expressed his displeasure with the suggestion, sparking a heated argument between the two. The scene shifted to the astronaut cautiously navigating the captain's bridge, a frightening and harrowing spectacle for the audience, as a multitude of mysterious creatures lurked beneath. He proceeded with care, intent on reaching the nuclear reactor. Along their path, they confronted a legion of these enigmatic creatures, sparking a desperate battle for survival. In the midst of the chaos, the commander took the precaution of securing the boy behind a glass door, shielding him from harm and preventing any impulsive attempts to jump outside the ship. The entire crew grappled with the intense struggle for survival, engaging in a fierce conflict against the relentless onslaught of these terrifying creatures. The scene depicts a confrontation between the commander and the boy, revealing the commander's villainous nature in the story. He had perpetrated the killings, driven by a desire for control and a misguided ambition to become a deity. When the astronaut and the girl inquired about their location, the commander deactivated the spaceship's shielding, uncovering the startling truth that they were submerged deep beneath the sea. They came to realize that they had actually landed on Tanis 900 years prior, but due to a technical malfunction, they had been in a state of suspended animation within the spacecraft. This prolonged slumber led to the evolution of the mysterious creatures from the human species. As the truth dawned upon them, a fierce confrontation ensued. In a moment of desperation, the astronaut struck the computer, causing cracks to appear in the spaceship. Water began to flood in, prompting a frantic escape. The astronaut and the girl managed to flee, while the commander succumbed to the depths of the water. They emerged on the surface of the sea, along with the other humans who had been in stasis, finding themselves freed from the clutches of the evolved deadly species. With the threat eliminated, they embraced their new life on the planet Tanis, filled with hope and the promise of a peaceful existence.